Hello everyone, we're getting ready to look up today with a brand new Uplook video, tackling one of our top 10 lists. You can like the video, subscribe, and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Today, we'll think about 10 ways to be a blessing in your local church. Ephesians 5.25 says that Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Since that is amazingly true, now we get to do the same. John puts it this way, By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. What we need are some keys to be able to help our fellow believers. Here's the first one. Number one is to be there. Exactly. I think very often people assume that we aren't locked into any local church anymore and people tend to be floaters. But I think we need to be committed to one local church. Have a vision bigger than your local church, but be committed to one local church. It would almost be humorous if it wasn't so serious. We read this in Exodus chapter 24 and verse 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and be there. <laughs> and so I think this may be overlooked sometimes, but there's a huge benefit in just being consistent in my attendance. Good, and along with that, number two, try to be on time. We do it for our job. It's just respectful, and uh, sometimes young families have to plan ahead a bit to do that. I remember in our family, my wife had things lined up the night before, to get seven children out on time. But I think it's good for us to do that. In fact, if some of us can be a few minutes early, there are usually a few little tasks still left to be done at the last minute that we can join in and help. Number three, sit towards the front of the gathering if possible. You know, it's a hard thing for a preacher to preach over the Grand Canyon, and it's the same for the song leader. If we sit up closer together, it's something positive and encouraging about that. And we can leave the back rows for young mothers or for visitors, uh, people that maybe are not as agile as we are. And it's always good to think about being forward looking and to gather up towards the front. It's very positive, I think. Yes, a, a good friend of mine used to joke that there's a magnetic pull in churches towards the back of the room. Right, right. right. Uh, number four, sing brightly and sincerely. Right, it doesn't mean loudly, although the Bible does say that they sing loudly in heaven, so I'm getting ready for that. But I think there's something, again, very positive and hopeful. I think it's a good idea to get together and sing the hymns and learn the parts. It's a happy time of fellowship. It's very inspiring. And the scripture says, speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. There's something therapeutic about singing the songs of the church. Number five, take notes during the messages. It's a good idea, first of all, because it keeps us attentive, paying attention, following the preacher. And it also is a great memory aid. It makes me evaluate and assess things better when I'm writing them down. And so it's a good idea to maybe underline a key point that's been beneficial to you so that when you speak to the preacher afterwards, it's not just some sort of general thank you, but here's something I really appreciated. And that's a huge encouragement for uh, whoever spent that time preparing. Yeah, especially young preachers. It's great for them. And along with that kind of idea of encouragement, number six, notice who does the work and thank them. We don't sometimes think about this, but there are people who take out the garbage, people who pay the bills, people who fix the furnace late at night some nights. There are all sorts of tasks around the local church that are being done, and sometimes people go on years without getting a thank you. My sister learned calligraphy, and she would send a little anonymous note. I noticed, and the Lord notices, that you've been faithfully doing this. It's a huge pickup to people when they're laboring sometimes in an obscure role that they don't feel is very important and uh, just to underline our thanks. Good, and then number seven, almost in a broader sense, 
make it a habit to encourage someone each time you meet. I think it's great to have that practice. You know, Mark Twain said that he could live for two months on a good compliment. And some people go for years without actually hearing a kind word or an encouraging word. And uh, we give away words of encouragement like they cost a thousand dollars a piece, but you can pass them around. Say, I appreciate the way you treat your wife. I'm encouraged by the way you raise your family. Thank you for your faithfulness in attendance. I know it's not easy with your arthritis or whatever that you're here. There are all sorts of little things we can say. They're little things, they make a big difference. And number eight, give to the work of God. It's good for us to give regularly, proportionately, happily, and let's do it wisely. Sometimes people respond simply to these uh, bleeding heart stories with some tattered orphan child on the picture and all the time these people are just fundraising for their organization. We want to give our money as good stewards and I think we realize that the way God has designed for us to be enriched by us giving away. I remember years ago driving along in the car listening to a radio program and someone had sent in the question and said, my husband and I disagree as to whether we should pay 10% of our gross income or 10% of our net income. And whatever you tell us, we're going to take that as the answer from the Lord. And the preacher answered, well, I suppose it all depends on whether you want gross blessing or net blessing. <laughs> the Lord's no man's debtor, and he'll more than compensate us, not always in the same currency, but he will enrich our lives as we seek to enrich the lives of others around us. That's a very helpful uh, illustration. Uh, number nine is be wise but faithfully hospitable to others. And when I say be wise, sometimes there are people who have conditions that don't make it easy for them to greet us at the door. They may need some time to get ready. And so just to pop in on some people is very acceptable. To other people, not so much. And also the scripture says, withdraw your foot from your neighbor's door lest he tire of you and so hate you. Sometimes uh, we can overdo visiting. And so we need to be wise in this, but we all should be consistent. This is something that's important to be in one another's homes and to get to know each other in a more relaxed way than simply in official church meetings. So I would really encourage people to practice this habit of visitation in hospital rooms, make it short, uh, make it sweet, but uh, be there because God's people need to be interacting in each other's lives. And finally, number 10, be a servant helper like Jesus wherever you see a need. I love the words that uh, the Apostle Paul speaks about Phoebe in um, Romans 16. He says, I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Sancria, that you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and a sister in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. And so people think the term helper is kind of a diminutive term, like that's not very important. But uh, being a helper is crucial to the accomplishment of the work of God. So in all of these different areas, you know, sometimes we think that if something big isn't happening, nothing's really happening. But life is made up of little things, little words of encouragement, little acts of kindness, a thoughtful deeds. God help us to notice these little things that make a big difference in the life of our local church.